Welcome back, boils and ghouls. I see you're still with us. <laughs> Our monster movie, Horrorthon, continues on BCTV, if you dare to watch. And now, here are your hosts once again, Jocelyn Nelson and Carlo Guadadino. Yeah! <laughs> This segment is brought to you by Jimmy John's, located in Wa on Washington Road in Washington, PA. Welcome back, everyone, to the Monster Movie Horror-a-thon. We're coming at you right now from Bethany College in Bethany, West Virginia. So, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying House on Haunted Hill. As you can see, my co-host Carlo is not with me right now. We're going to get to why very shortly. As you know, we are going to, around midnight, be going up into the bell tower of Old Main to see if there's any ghosts up there that we can find or anything creepy that we can check out. But right now, we're going to try to creep around Old Main somewhere else. So I'm going to send it down to Carlo, who is with our medium, Angela, in Commencement Hall. Commencement Hall with the Bethany Media. Uh, well, first off, when we first uh, came, loud noises come. Sink was on. I walked in there, no sink, no sink on. Kind of freaked me out. You walk in, everything gets quiet. See me out that window, like that this, we're, we're right here, we're right by the uh, balcony of Old Main, which uh, looks over commencement, and hot spot, so I'll come. Well, everybody, like I said before, it's nice and warm in this room, but you walk towards the area right underneath of the balcony, and you can just feel the cold chill, and some towards the middle of the room, like direct center, you can just feel like there's something there. I can guarantee it's not violent. It's not going to hurt anyone. Oh, well, that, that but, just got to chill up my spine. Like, I'm not even, that's, ooh. It, there, that was a ghost. I felt it. Oh, it's that's here. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> you ghost, you can stay right here. This is the area you stay in. I'm over here. You you over here. Like, <laughs> but, um, so are they, you said that they're not going to harm anybody, nothing like that. So, I mean, it's just a spirit that maybe, I mean, or, it could just be that this was their favorite place. Oh, spirits are like that? Like they just—they might not be somewhere that they were, like somewhere that they actually died in, but it'll be like a. No, um, not to cut to a different area of the building, but in the bell tower, there's a room with a bunch of names in it, and there could be spirits connected to any specific name on that wall just because their name's in the room. Well, uh, I'm getting real cold down here, so uh, we're gonna send it back up to Jocelyn, and uh, so yeah, that's just Jocelyn, take it away. Thank you very much to Carlo and our and Angela down in Commencement Hall. So she's been creeped out a little bit by here, which I think is proof enough that there's something going on. So now we're going to hit you up with some more trivia questions. Our, our fourth trivia question is, in the original slasher classic Scream, there are three rules to successfully surviving a horror film. What are these three rules? Your movie prize for this one is going to be one of our producer, Eric Sproul's favorites, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, and the, <laughs> and the granddaddy of all point of view shot horror films, the one that started it all, The Blair Witch Project. If you think you have the right answer to this question, make sure to shoot us an email at bctvhorrorthon at yahoo.com. That's bctvhorrorthon, H-O-R-R-O-R-T-H-O-N at yahoo.com. The 13th email with the correct answer will win both Blair Witch Project and Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer. So those are some fun videos for you to watch on your Halloween night. And now let's look a little bit around at our security cameras again and see what's going on in Old Main and what we got going on there. We got some nice hallway shots. That's the downstairs hallway too, which is pretty close to commencement, so we don't know what might be down there. We got a little bit in Kirkpatrick, which you're gonna hear some ghost stories about from our students later on. First floor to the lobby cam. We really got not too much that we've seen on camera yet, but we're still hoping to catch a little something throughout the night as things get darker, it gets colder, we get a few more ghosts creeping around to see why we're in their house in the middle of the night. So we're looking forward to seeing what we can come up with soon. 
And now, as long as we're talking about these creepy stories and everything, why don't we pitch it to a few more of the ghost stories that we have heard from here on Bethany campus. We're going to hear a little bit from Octavia Holton. Well, it all started on my freshman year at Bethany for Halloween. Dr. Grimes does his little readings in the cemetery. So a big group of us at the time, well, my freshman class was really huge. We decided to you know, go on the pool cemetery. So we're all just walking in this little dark wooded area. First of all, I don't know why I decided to go in the woods in the first place in a cemetery, because that's just creepy all together. So we're walking, the leaves are just trembling. And it's just dark and creepy. You know how that one kid just want to mess with everybody's emotions and make random noises, give us half heart attacks. And we're walking, and you know what they say, like, you shouldn't step on people's tombstones because, you know, wake the dead. So, like, we're all, like, tiptoeing, trying not to step on nobody's tombstone because, you know, we're in West Virginia, so I'm pretty sure they're all angry. And we get to the, the cemetery where Dr. Grimes is supposed to tell this story, and one of the stories, which you won't believe me, but it's so it happened, um, we get to the cemetery, and he's talking about this um, woman. She was pregnant at the time. Her husband found out that the baby wasn't his, so he decided to try to cut the baby out of her. And like, he said that on the Bethany Bridge, if you sit there for a while on Halloween night, you would see, like in the stars, the woman's baby coming out and like crying. And it's so creepy and funny. I was just like, okay, Dr. Grimes is definitely crazy. I'm in West Virginia, they're just trying to play with your emotions. You know, we heard a couple stories and I'm like, okay, we're in West Virginia, they probably sell it real well, right? So me and my roommates, I was like, come on, let's just go to the Bethany Bridge, let's sit down. We know we live in CV, it's nothing. So we're walking, you know, it's all dark. It's really creepy, it's like perfect scene in a horror movie, basically. You have the two Caucasian women and then the one African American, and we're just walking, and you just hear the wind blowing. You know, we're surrounded by trees, so it's like shoo, 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 shoo. And it's dark over there because there are really no lights. So we're sitting on the bridge, and I'm just sitting, and I'm just like, okay, trees are blowing. I'm listening, because you know, in this type of scenery, I come up missing first. So I'm just like, hmm, okay, it's just the wind, okay? And I hear a random, why? So I was like, did you hear that? My roommate's like, what are you talking about? I said, you didn't hear that. She said, no. I said, okay. So I sit back. I'm just hanging on my legs off the bridge. I said, I'm crazy, I'm crazy. Let it go, you just saw, you just read it, you know, heard Dr. Grimes' story, so you're just basically wanting to believe it's real. And that probably was a part of me at that moment in time, and I was like, okay, you got this. So then, all of a sudden, why, why? I said, now stop. I know y'all had to hear it, like you had to hear it. Like, I know I'm not crazy. Like, I can't be the crazy one, like, I am the crazy one, but, like, I can't be the legit crazy one. I'm in college. I made it to college. Like, I'm not crazy. And my roommate was like, you really need to just calm down. Like, I really think it's somebody messing with you because we don't hear anything. I said, okay. So I'm looking around. I said, look, we all just go. We all gonna look where I look and we're going to be quiet. So we're sitting there looking up. I'm like, okay. Okay. It's all silent. You just hear the winds, you hear the trees, and it's just like, you hear one car pass by, I'm like, okay, I know it's a car, and like, it's nothing big. No, I'm here, why, why, why? I said, okay, you heard it. I know you heard it, because we were all quiet, no one's talking, you had to hear it. And they were like, yeah, we heard it, but where is it coming from? I said, you know, I'm not, it can't be the story. It can't be the story. Like, somebody's messing with me, you know, we live in CV, so this is the only creepy thing that could possibly happen to us. So uh, we all stand up on the bridge, and we're looking, and just, we're just looking like our peripheral, like, okay, there's nobody around. And then it happened again. And I was like, I looked up, and it's a woman, and like, the baby's still connected to the umbilical cord, and just slowly coming down. It looked like it was like, near us, and I was just like, I was like, I'm out, I'm out, I'm not dying in this movie, I'm not dying, like, this is not happening. I never at night go to that Bethany Bridge, ever. I won't do it, even a Halloween, can't do it.
And we're back after that creepy story from Octavia. And as she was going, me and you both kind of looked behind us. We were hearing footsteps over in commencement. I don't know what you stirred up down there. I didn't stir nothing up. You don't blame Angela. I've, yeah, the two of you got something going. No, now. she got me attacked by a ghost down there. And I, I don't, I don't, uh, Eric, I, I don't know if I can do the show anymore. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, when we were watching that and we started hearing the crash and the footsteps, I freaked out a little bit. Just not, a little bit. Not kidding. I don't know if I can do this anymore. <laughs> okay, well, as long as we're going to be freaking out standing here for a little bit, let's freak you out a little bit by sending it back to House on Haunted Hill. The idea for doing Castle Blood actually just came from a Halloween party. We had just uh, competed at a national customers competition and we did a vampire wedding. So we invited all the people that were in the group here for a Halloween party that next year. Um, this town is great for trick-or-treaters being on the main street here. So we had tons of kids, we gave out candy, and then we had our party. So we named it Castle Blood simply because it was full of vampires. The themes for the castle change, the story itself changes each year, but it is an ongoing story. We have one set legend in the backstory of, uh, of how we ended up in, in Pennsylvania. Um, we have the, uh, the ancient vampires that came from Russia that are the actual owners, Alexander and Anastasia and their families. Um, then in the story, uh, they move to Scotland eventually, where Gravely and Griselda, the characters that my wife and I usually portray, hooked up with them as Gravely and Griselda Macabre, and the clan Macabre. And, uh, and there's different families from that that were part of it. And then when we came to the New World, um, a few more uh, got picked up here and there. The ideas from that come from all over because we are so many of us horror and science fiction geeks. We're relatively well read and we can you know, comb lots of different memories for ideas or old movies or things like that. It's like, okay, you know, I don't really think anybody's done a frozen ice cave scene before, you know? Maybe we could do something like that and what would be cool to happen in that? And those kind of brainstorming ideas happen all the time. And, and sadly, about 95% of the ideas don't get used. They get put in a file and maybe someday we can use them. You know, but yeah, everything has to mesh, has to work right. We need three or four different things every year, so they all have to work together. So the idea part is easy and hard at the same time. It's easy to come up with them, hard to figure out what actually to use. Castle Blood's gone through a lot of changes over the years. Um, we decided to go, I guess, pro. And as far as charging admission, um, we stayed with the trick-or-treat theme for a couple of years, and then we decided, well, you know, we're filling out all our property so much, we need to start charging a couple of bucks because it's, it's just killing us money-wise. Um, so that was the first big leap. And then I guess in the fourth year was when we changed, instead of just a walking through, which we've never really been much of a run through and get scared. We always had all these actors that were here doing magic and I guess in the fourth year we changed it so that there was an actual structured game and tour uh, through it. And then that has changed over the years as we've added different scenes and taken scenes away. We try to always have something fresh every year. The decision to run it here where we actually live, which is very surprising to a lot of people while they're waiting in line going, man, can you imagine having to live here? And I go, yes, actually I can, um, was convenience. This is a how do I phrase it? An unintentional non-for-profit organization here. Um, we do have to run it like a legitimate business, but we don't really actually try to make money. We run it like community theater and we pour all the money back into it and we do support a lot of local charities. So the reason to keep it at the house is basically, if I get up in the morning and it's a nice day, I can walk out my back door and build something. I think the thing that sets the castle apart from other attractions uh, is that it is a game and it truly is interactive. I personally don't believe that if a monster jumps out and says boo and you scream, I don't find that to be actually interactive. When you come into a scene and there's a witch there and she asks you a question and you answer and that changes how she has to deal with you and the public is changing what goes on inside a particular scene, 
that is interactive. So uh, we are definitely an acquired taste. You don't just run through screaming from a chainsaw. Um, but that is the people that come here and like it are very, very devoted to us and come all the time. And that is what sets us apart. The things that I really enjoy about doing the castle is that no matter how nerve wracking, tiring, expensive and everything else can it can be, it is really a creative playground here. You know, if we if we get an idea that we like, we can figure it out. We are, you just tax your brain to how can we write the script to make this work? How can we juggle what budget we do have to make this work and to build something special? And what can we do that's new and unique that nobody's ever seen or thought of before? And those are really the most fun parts of the castle itself. Obviously, the best part is the interaction with the cast members and all of us. So many of actually are family uh, or lifelong friends or have turned into new lifelong friends because of this. Good evening, foils and ghouls, and welcome to our 10-hour monster movie horror-thon, presented by BCTV on the Bethany Broadcasting Network, where our intrepid band of ghost hunters will attempt to prove at long last if Old Main on the campus of Bethany College is indeed haunted. <laughs> and now, here are your hosts, Jocelyn Nelson and Carlo Guadadino. This segment brought to you by Shop and Save, located on Jefferson Avenue in Washington, PA. All right, so everybody, welcome back to the Monster Movie Horror-a-thon. And as you can see, I'm standing here with our medium, Angela. Angela, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what you've been experiencing? Um, well, in Commencement Hall, I decided to take a walk up and actually go out on the balcony. And the first thing I felt going out onto the balcony was that just this huge flashback of somebody tumbling and falling over into Commencement Hall. Um, not sure how long ago that was, not sure if it actually happened or if it's going to happen. Hopefully it's not going to happen, but... Yeah, that's a great news considering we're all working around here tonight. I'm, I'm agreeing with you that I hope that's just a legend that we've forgotten at Bethany and it's not one to be. So, and as you can tell, my co-host Carlo is again not with me. I think you managed to scare him a little bit out of his wits and he decided to take a bit of a break for this segment. So, congratulations to you. I've been trying to do that all night. <laughs> well, it took a ghost to actually scare him, so. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty freaky for him too. And as long as we're talking about it, why don't we take a look at our security cameras again around campus or around Old Main. Okay, Angela, thank you very much for your time. And as you can see, that's our science lab. We're wondering if anything's in there, knocking stuff over. I'm still waiting to hear a bottle crash in that room. Looking a little bit outside, Old Main. Oh, those corridors freak me out. I'm not gonna lie, and those security cam shots, a little bit scary. And as long as we're thinking about this, we, I think we're ready to throw it over to Kyle Wales here on camera three, our cam cam. So Kyle, what do you got to tell us about Old Main and what's been going on around here in the past? stuff right there I'll tell you um, my shoes are tied so hopefully I don't be tripping and commencing anytime soon but uh, I'm gonna give you some facts here about Old Main um, definitely the oldest thing we have going on here on campus that thing was built in 1866 and right now we're gonna take it to academic parlor and you check out some uh, hopefully some possible ghosts we'll see what we can find here 
Uh, first off, the, uh, this job right here for Old Main was completed in 1866, the same year as Alexander Campbell's death. Sadly, um, couldn't await in time for that. But uh, there resembles the main structure at the University of Glasgow, where Campbell studied briefly before coming to America in 1809. And uh, commencement hall and society hall at either end completed in 1871. And right here, about to go to academic parlor. The tower height is disputed. Researchers cite anything from 112 to more than 140 feet. And we're going to go to academic parlor and we're going to see what we can get. Oh, we can't get in here. All right, well. It looks like we can't get in, but I know there is one secret passageway that takes us up to the top of the bell tower. And we're going to send it back down to Jocelyn, and we're going to figure out what's going on with that tower. Taylor Furco is going to be late showing later about the bell tower and the top of this uh, beautiful, beautiful old main. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Wales. That's a real shame that we're not able to get into the tower that way, but we know that Taylor knows some way. So as long as we're thinking about that, we're going to take this on down because we're moving along to our next movie, Dementia 13. <laughs> 